<clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Page of Swords podcast. This is episode 24, and I'm bringing uh, Anya on today. I hope that I got that one right. Cause... You did it! We... <laughs> <laughs> we practiced, okay? We for practiced. a minute, or not even a minute, a couple seconds, we practiced. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on, because I've been following you for a while now, because I think you have, like, some of the best training footage on your Instagram. It is so good. I just want everybody to know now that like you guys got to follow Anya cuz she is training her ass off. <laughs> Absolutely. And that actually means a ton to me. I really appreciate that you guys or that you specifically, especially you are actually watching these videos. Um it really means a lot to me. So Yeah, so currently you live in the Dallas area? Or what I do. Yep. Okay. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm one of those people that technically uh, i'll claim dallas even though i live like right outside of the city of dallas it's a little small town called richardson um right next to me, like allen and plano texas so mm -hmm. and because i've been to texas a couple times i've been to like san antonio and like mm -hmm. close to tyler um but i love it there it's beautiful it's so warm and everything is that where you're originally from not originally. So okay. uh, originally I was born in um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I spent a good chunk of my life there. Then I actually moved to Atlanta, Georgia for most of my life. Um, okay. So we've been in Texas for, I think in March will be three years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't been there super long. So you, you were already in the bodybuilding then, huh? I was, yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, I, I, I ended up getting my pro card while being here in Texas, but I started competing while I was in Georgia. How was the bodybuilding scene when you were in Georgia? Was it like anything different from like Texas? A little bit. There were, we had a different like uh, state of Georgia chairman. I don't actually remember what his name was at the time, um, but I didn't see a lot of bodybuilders in Texas, or I'm sorry, in Georgia. And then I moved, I say that even though I think like Sid Gillen, who yeah. is of course the Miss Figure Olympia stays in, in Georgia. But we moved to Texas and I, I think the specific area that we're at, like it's, it's majorly dominated by bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, and the gym, of course, Destination Dallas that I go to, it's, it's nothing but, if it's not a, a bodybuilder, then it's someone who could be a bodybuilder who just likes to go and work out for fun, so. Are there yeah. any uh, other pros at your gym? Lots. I, there, there's a ton of different pros. I, I definitely have to give a shout out to pretty much all of them. We've got like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of them probably, um, but like Liv Roth. Oh, goes there. I was thinking that sometimes I get the gym names all mixed up, but yeah, yeah. Liv and uh, Hunter, I'm sure are always there. Yep. Yeah. We've also got Divine, who was a classic physique competitor um, for the Olympia, who, who goes there. There's a lot of pros. Um, and a lot of people that are not pros that, that very, very well could be um, professionals here soon. So. I feel like being in that sort of atmosphere probably like really motivates you just like hard. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. You'll, you'll, you'll see people who, who don't even compete and they're like, you know, pressing the same as you. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to have to step up my game a, a little bit. But everyone um, at this gym in this area has always been super friendly and, and welcoming. Um, so I, I definitely have to give major shout outs to, to everybody at Destination Dallas for sure. Definitely. And it seems like it's got really good equipment from the videos that you take and everything too. just a little bit of mixture of like, it looks pretty new equipment, you know, it doesn't look it's not, I'm sure it's a hardcore gym, but it doesn't look like you're like dirty garage stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they, they keep it nice and clean that for anybody who is like concerned about that. They definitely do. They've got a mixture of old school equipment, um, or, or at least my version of old school equipment, um, and, and new school as well. They keep everything up to date. So. Do you have a favorite machine? So <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be basic and say like the squat rack. So I will switch it up and there's like this, it, I don't, my coach called it something. I think he called them like Roger squats, but I might be wrong, but it's like this machine. It's an orange machine. It's a squat machine in destination. Okay. You can load the plates on the top or the bottom. And that's been something that I've been finishing my leg workouts with. And it is, I actually think it's actually changed the way that my quads and my hamstrings have looked. It's, it's is it like a belt? No, it's not the belt one. You don't have a belt. Okay. You like strap up and then you like unleash the actual weights from the top of it. And okay. you can actually, you can grab the side or you don't have to grab anything either. 
Um, I think I posted a video of it on my Instagram like a couple of days ago, but it is. Yeah, I was trying to see if you have it. Uh, oh, wait, here, let me, I'll share my screen. Big orange machine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, because now I'm curious. <laughs> is it That's the one, that's it. Yep. Okay, I see a squat pro. Man, that almost uh, looks like a safety bar squat, but. A little machine. bit. And it feels that's a bit the same. Thing. It's just with the safety bar, I feel it solely really in my quads. This one, it is a little bit more quad dominant, mm -hmm. but I still feel it in my entire leg. I've been, um, I'm hearing that kind of theory where with a squat, you know, obviously it depends on where your foot placement is, but when you do a squat, you're pretty much going to hit the whole leg in some sort of way. You are. Yeah, so I definitely can understand that, that you probably, so were, you said you were using this for quad day? Well, interestingly enough, um, a lot of my quad and hamstring days are just slightly different, um, but both of them have that same machine inside of it. And it's a finisher. I don't know. I know that there's people who like don't believe in finishers or like make fun of that term. Yeah, do. It, it does what it does. Um, but for this one, it could be because my legs are already so filled with blood that I just feel it everywhere. Um, but it, it's used for both, both quads and hamstrings. That's awesome. And do you know how much weight you had on there? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I think I looked this up and I forgot. I don't know how much the platform weighs itself, but on my final one, it was six plates. So six times 45 times two. So I think it was 540 pounds. See, and I'm a, I like machines, especially something like this that you're using because, you know, with squats, you know, if you probably did six plates, like free bar, I don't, I actually don't know what you do for free bar, but like, there's like that thing in the back of your head, like where some people just don't have that mental, like they don't feel safe enough to do yeah. super heavy squats, but like, at least with a machine that like mental, like idea stigma behind it is just not there and you can focus a little different. Yeah, man. I, I actually love that you said that. I, I've injured my, I, I won't say injured, but I've, I've tweaked myself during free squats. I love to squat. It's just my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so anytime that I go to free squat, whether it be on the Smith's machine or just regular, I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm always like putting like a little bit of like a seed into that injured area where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go heavy. Like I luckily I have a spot, but with, whenever I get on heavy machines, I'm like, okay, I know that this is going to be a little bit more controlled. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I need to escape, it's a little bit easier to escape that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I agree. Cause that's with how much I, I appreciate how much you um, go hard in the gym and everything. That mental thing is something I really wanted to ask you because I just know that over time I've improved the mental part of it. And I know that it's different for everybody, but it's just like the injury, like you said, it is a mental hurdle to kind of get over. So, yeah. It definitely is, it, it especially, or at least from my experience, and I'm going to knock on wood here. I haven't, I've been blessed enough to not have a lot of experiences, even when I played basketball, mm -hmm. I haven't, haven't had a lot of um, injuries. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I got my first one for bodybuilding, it did kind of put things in perspective where it's like, okay, I know that you have, you know, these, these big goals and you want to lift heavy weights and, you know, you, as everyone is influenced by social media, you see everybody lifting all this heavy weights, but it's, really important to make sure that a you can lift what you're trying to lift and b that you're staying safe with it like you can still get the workout that you want without having six plates on the side if you're doing it correctly yeah and i think along with that too um an ego thing is definitely involved right. with, with beginners i see it a lot i mean and that's both men and females i feel like i see a lot of people just go for the weight. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like it's okay to just start little and just feel it, you know, and then, you know, progressively just keep adding more. But I don't know where that concept is. I guess everybody just wants to go big or go home. And I'm just like, mm. uh, <laughs> I think it's funny with social media. It's so funny because, um, my coach that I have now, uh, that's one of the call outs that he made. He was like, some of the workouts that I'm going to be giving you, you're gonna have to drop your ego because right now I'm more focused on your form and making sure that you're executing it perfectly or at least as perfect as you have the ability to as opposed to weight the weight will get there um it might take a little bit of time you know but don't let you know seeing other people lift weights influence you to think like i have to do this immediately everybody has their own time for things mm -hmm.
patience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> so um, who is your coach that you're working with? Uh, right now I'm, I'm actually working with Brandon Ray. Okay. Okay. Is that, is he local to the Dallas area with you? He's not. He's um, in Los Angeles, California right now, um, which I think, I think it's like a two hour time difference or something like that with PST. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's always available. It, it doesn't matter what time of the day. I can text him and be like, hey, look, I, I woke up like starved, you know, in the off season, like I'm about to eat all day. Um, and the good thing about him is he always responds really quickly and he makes adjustments as he sees fit. So that's great. Yeah. Great communication with a coach, of course. Yeah. Is, um, is he the coach that you were with when you turned pro? It's not. Um, when I turned pro, actually, I was working with Andrew Booth. Uh, who I would, the name speaks for itself right there. Yeah. I mean, guy is, is very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, he did help me get my pro card and in going into USA's in 2019. I was about to say last year, but it's 2021 now. I technically. I know, right? The, uh, did that year even happen? I don't know. Right? Like, <laughs> see, race everything in 2020, man. It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, he, he was who I worked with before um, I started working with Brandon Ray. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I do know Andrew, very big name. So I guess before I like talk about the pro card and everything, I would like to start even like further back. So when did you start competing? I started competing in 2014. It's so funny. I, I posted on my story, my very first show was the uh, Coastal USA's in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first show I've ever done. I was working with a local coach in, in Georgia um, at the time who actually no longer works with, with competition prep anymore. Um, but it was my first show and it was a little bit different back then than it was now. I was just like dipping my, my feet into the water, seeing what it could do. And I just loved it. I don't know what it was, but it was just the, the stage lights and like having people, I guess, technically critique something that you have full control over improving that I just, I loved it. I fell in love with it. And yeah, I was going to say, I have the NPC website open and it says like 2015 and I'm like, why do I feel like she might have some other ones that <laughs> didn't quite make the website, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 2015, oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 2015, I actually, I did two national shows in 2015. So it's been a, it's been a long, long journey. I wasn't one of the, the one show pros. Um, I did Junior USAs in 2015. Mm -hmm. got third place in my class at that point in time and of course after that i'm like Woof, let's give it another shot like who cares about the improvements let's do another show in like four months let's see what we can do uh and of course i did the other show in four months which is a, which um at the time was a much bigger show it was NPC nationals mm -hmm. in miami and i got eighth place in my class on that one um and then after that i decided to take a little bit of a break to get everything that i needed to grow um not only physically, but financially, mentally, you know, all of the above. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, cause it, it only has 2015 and then goes to 2019. Is that how long your break was? It was, yeah. Wow. I, stopped, I stopped in 2015 and I literally came back um, in 2019 to qualify for a national show again at the Dallas Europa. Wow. So you really put in a good break and really probably focused and then you came in and probably just like swiped the shows. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming. <laughs> they probably were like, where did this person come from? <laughs> I think there's only like a couple of people that remember, like I actually competed a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, the, I, I needed the break. I, my first show that I ever did, I was a senior in college okay. and all of my money was going to like books for classes you know, getting everything together for graduation. And then the other part of it was going to competing. Mm -hmm. And so not only did I have to focus on, okay, I have a lot to improve on in my physique. Like I need to take some actual time to do this and humble myself, but I also needed to, you know, get myself a big girl job. I didn't have a sponsor at the time on um, that paid for, for shows and, and competition and travel. Mm -hmm. It was just eating up my funds and being like a college student. Like I already had no money at that time. So I like made myself like, you know, I, I promised myself that I would go get myself a big girl job. I would save off, I would pay off cars, you know, pay off any, any debt that I had. And then whenever that was done, I would get back into the competing world when I were, whenever I was comfortable to not only compete, but do the things that, that I wanted to do outside of it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like true dedication because I feel like everybody just wants to rush, rush, rush. So mm -hmm. that's why when I saw that, I was like, you must have had taken a break. And that's awesome. Like, that's such a, you know, I wish more people would see that. So it's like you, do you remember what your feedback was from 2015? It's so funny because my feedback was the same. <laughs> My feedback was the same in 2015 as it was whenever I uh, did my first pro show. I needed to get a little bit more size and I needed to come in um, more tighter in my, my posterior. Okay. Um, so probably like a lot of women, like I, I've got some, some pretty sizable legs. Um, mm -hmm. Genetically speaking, that, that's my most dominant body part. Mm -hmm. But the size that they have, it's very hard to get them like absolutely like peeled shredded. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I spent a lot of time working on uh, my diet and nutrition. And I think personally speaking, um, in my opinion, my most conditioned package was either when I did get my pro card, um, or my actual pro debut, but both of which I was still super small. Like I was smaller than, than everybody else there, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like throughout all this time, um, because I know you said that you feel like you just, um, you're finally nailing that condition and look that you're looking for, but you've put so much time into it. And do you feel like that has contributed, like all the time has added up to that, like look though, right. With your training and nutrition, just putting in the time is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I definitely think so. I really do. It was a lot of experimenting. It was a lot of, are you doing everything that you need to do to be successful? Like, you know, it, not only are you, you definitely have to work out in the gym. I think I was putting in what I needed to in the gym, but it was like, what can I be doing better with, with my diet? Am I drinking the two gallons of water that I need to, you know? And like when I first started, <laughs> I'm about to like give myself away, but like my very first show, I remember eating like chocolate chip cookies, like yeah. two weeks out. I never told my coach this until after the show and I was working with a totally different coach and like I still came in okay condition but it was like oh I lost like I didn't get overall like why didn't I get overall and then I had to really look at myself and be like well you probably didn't get overall because somebody was dieting harder than you like somebody wasn't eating cookies at two weeks out um they were eating cookies after they got their trophy in their first place they were able to have more discipline than you and that part really kind of changed things where it's like, okay, my success really is required upon the work and the discipline that I can put in. So going forward, whenever you're mentally ready for it, after this four year break that I took, um, you know, take out all of the additional things that you were doing before to see if you can reach your full capacity or full potential. Yeah, and you know what, to be honest, I think when everybody starts out, <laughs> everybody's had to have cheated on a prep diet at least once. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, no, nobody can say that they've had a, a per well, I, I can't say nobody. I'm sure there's someone out there that's like, I'm going to write her and let her know that I did a, a perfect. Yeah. Prep. But for me personally, that, that really was like, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. I know, I know that mistake. I accept it. And I learned from it. Like going forward, I know that I can't eat cookies two weeks out. <laughs> For, for real. And it's like, you're starting out and I feel like every mistake adds up to something greater, which is, you know, after all the years that you put in, I mean, yeah, mistakes happen and it creates an even better, like final package. Whenever you're like, I know that every mistake I made contribute to now. And that's why I look the way I do. And that's why I'm a pro now is what you can say, you know, like I didn't have cookies, so I'm a pro now. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to go 18 weeks with no cookies. And this is what earned me the pro card. <laughs> it all started with a cookie. <laughs> you know, and um, just because I always love to ask this question too, while I remembered. Mm -hmm. So I have noticed that I think you've pretty much had a different colored suit for every show. Mm -hmm. I so have, yeah. That's awesome too, because I mean, I, I've literally only stuck to the greens. <laughs> so I'm like, man, you've had all kinds of colors. So is there one that worked better? Is there one you like best? Man, we have a whole, me and my partner, we have a whole like conversation at least once every two weeks about suit colors. <laughs> so and it's really funny. We're like, hmm, maybe with your skin color, and if we do this color of tan, it would bring a little bit of darker. I can say from my personal experience, um, my suit color, I wore like this 
this green, I don't actually know what shade of green it was. Um, but the mint colored one? Say it again. Is that a mint colored one? No, no, no. That was Nationals. Oh, there okay. was one. Yeah. Oh, no, that was Junior USA's. I think I wore the same thing for Junior USA's as I did for Nationals. Mm -hmm. But I know that I love green. I think that works best with my, my skin color. Mm -hmm. But the suit that I wore for um, USA's in 2019 was my ultimate favorite. I was going to say, let me see here for USA's. So this is your pro card win. Oh yeah. The emerald green. That was the one where I was like, okay. And it, everything just seemed to flow. It's so funny because some of the feedback that I got from the coaches, like they were also like the final thing was like great suit color. <laughs> like yeah. this, this was good. Um, and I got it from the same company. I'm going to say their name wrong. It's like Sal, Salea. Oh yes, um, Salea suits in Las Vegas. Yeah, I've always gotten my suit. Every suit that I've worn so far has has been from them. Um, and so I tried to do a blue suit for my pro debut mm -hmm. from the same 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 style. I don't want to have anything extra on my suit mm -hmm. um, or something that just stands out to where it's taking away from my physique itself. But I know that's that's a part of the game. Yeah. Um, but I went with that suit and it was so much silver on it that it ended up looking like it was a silver suit sometimes. Like yeah. it did, you couldn't really see the blue in it. Mm -hmm. Though it was a gorgeous suit. Mm -hmm. um, but another color that I felt I've always looked good in, um, you know, personally speaking, has been yellow. So I knew that, okay, my next one, I want to do some sort of a yellow one. And that's from Chicago Pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like the yellow. I am very I envious. <laughs> I think yellow is one of my favorite colors and I'm just like, oh, I just don't think I could rock it, but man, you do. I, I love the look. <laughs> man, I appreciate you. Seriously. <laughs> I think uh, for next year, I may, um, I may do another yellow suit, mm -hmm. maybe a different, different type of yellow or a different shade of yellow. Mm -hmm. um, but I think whenever we get to the, the, the women's physique debut, it'll, it'll be yellow. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I I knew that you did figure because it seems like you've done figure from the start, right? It's always been figure. So what was your feedback from your last show? More size. So so when I did my my pro part, I'm sorry, when I did my pro debut, um, it was the Savannah Pro last year in August. Mm -hmm. um, and so got on stage. I can say this much. I came in very conditioned. I, I was I was I was very peeled. Especially in the night show, whenever we actually added the meals and my body responded the way that it should have responded. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the feedback that I got from the, the judges there was that we need to, one, add more size, um, two, work on posing and pre-judging. My posing and, and my finals was much better than it was in pre-judging. I think I needed to get all of the nerves out. Like It was just like a, like a wave of like emotion of everything. and, and um, something that I, I definitely need to improve on next time. Um, but one of the other call outs that happened was one of the head judges there told me that they, that they think that I should try women's physique, specifically from my backside. They said that I have like the glutes and the legs um, and the thickness in my back for physique and my lines are also very, very good and I have the ability to get conditioned. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the judges said they'd like to see me that year, which was 2020, do like a small women's physique show, see how I do, along with still adding on size. I needed more size for figure and I, and I needed more size for women's physique too. Mm -hmm. um, but that was kind of like the final tipping point to have an actual judge say that I, they would like to see me outside of the heels. I've had a lot of people tell me that for a very, very long time. I've always actually wanted to do women's physique, but I was always just like, no, let me just let me get figure a feel like I still have goals to hit in this division and maybe one day it'll be women's fatigue. So. Yeah, I, uh, I can see that. Cause I definitely feel like, like you said, your legs have always been your strong suit and you definitely have some amazing lines. Like I love leg lines. That's like my big goal myself. So when I see a, when I see a good pair of legs, I'm like, mm, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah. <laughs> But I understand that you wanted to perfect uh, figure first because I actually watched I I watched the live stream of the Savannah Pro and that was a big lineup. That was a lot of girls. It was. I I just remember like leading up to the show weeks out from it. I was like, I'm not gonna look at who the lineup is because I'm just gonna focus on myself. You know, do that that whole thing that people you know really try to do. And then of course, whenever the the final list came out, I saw there was like three, maybe four maybe five actually like previous Olympians. And I'm just like, 
okay. You know, I, I still believe in myself. I think I can do this. Like, I, I'm not going to back down for anything like that, um, you know, because eventually I would, I, I believe that I have it in me to become an Olympian as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we moved forward. It's so funny because both of the shows that I chose to do in my, my rookie season were both filled. I think both of them actually had the most figure competitors out of every show of the year. And I know the shows were, you know, shut down for most of it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them had most of the previous Olympians. And <laughs> I just chose the hardest shows that you can do this year just to see, I guess. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I actually don't remember seeing the Savannah Pro before, like previous. I think this is my first year that I watched it and even heard of it. Like, of course, I knew the Chicago Pro, but I was just like stunned. I was like, I think there was like definitely over 40 girls. And I was just like, I can't even imagine like all these girls, like you, everybody looks so good. And I'm just like, these judges, I mean, even like the Olympia, I even heard Sandy was like, you girls didn't make this easy. And I'm like, no, they did not. <laughs> Everybody looked good. I remember backstage and I'm like, this is different. It was different than being at USA. Everyone was just bigger. They're, they seemed to just to be more dense. They seemed to be more wide. And so I just remember being backstage, having a great time, having, you know, having conversations with everyone, just speaking with all of these people who I've seen on the Olympia stage before um and just thinking like there's not one person here that like doesn't look like they could win this <laughs> i agree yeah and it, it all just comes up to you guys you ladies just like standing up against um in a line you know that's that's who like really stands out you know you're just looking for that one person who just yep. pops the most i guess <laughs> that's it who can bring the most attention to yourself um from the judges perspective and and they really do look at a lot especially a show of that capacity with so many people so many people that look good um you start to weigh in on the small things you know suit color suit choice shoe choice you know uh earring choice etc so i think i really do feel like a lot of that you know played a role into um who was in first call out second call outs etc was there any big differences from the savannah to chicago was there like something that like you're saying like you kind of like noticed the small details was was there something that you just instantly were like, I got to fix this for my next pro show? Size. So we came in, um, we came in about seven pounds heavier stage weight for Savannah. I I'm sorry, for Chicago Pro than we did Savannah. So I was feeling much more full. I definitely had a little bit more energy going into Chicago Pro. Um, so more size was one of the call outs that the judges made for, for Savannah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we did bring that for Chicago. Um, but I think one thing that I could have done is come in a little bit more crisp. Um, if I could have the size that I had in Chicago and the conditioning that I had in Savannah, I think it would have been a much better, you know, end of story. Um, but that was, that was one of the things that, that we definitely noticed is we came in bigger, legs were fuller, everything was much more full. Mm -hmm. Um, we just could have come in a little bit, a little bit more tighter. So what does that like look like? Cause it looks like you must've had maybe about a four months in between maybe. And are you like in the gym doing maybe like a little more cardio or just, just kind of just continuing the process? Was there just anything different in that sort of aspect? So we, I think after Savannah, there was, I think it was like a month and a half in between those two. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, food increased not by not by much but it was it was definitely increased from what it was at savannah and my cardio decreased um so i'm just gonna like throw this out here i'm one of those people that have to do a ton of cardio um i can gain weight pretty easily but i am a hard cutter like it, it takes it takes a lot so whenever i talk about coming in a condition like i i'm like gonna say that with a smile on my face because it's like I had to actually really really work to get conditioned like it wasn't just like a, a quick diet and 45 minutes of hit cardio um when we were doing savannah it was six min 60 minutes on the stairmaster which I'm sure a lot of people do um on the stairmaster but it was also 30 minutes post-workout cardio every day mm -hmm. um whereas for Chicago we took away that post-workout cardio and just did the 60 minutes of, of fasted every day yeah, I'm the same the same way. That's why I'm like trying to, because I'm in prep now. So I'm just like, what can I learn? Because it seems like, because I'm the same, same way. I've got a desk job and it's just like, I don't really move around a lot during the day. And um, I think we might be about the same height. I'm 5'3". Are you, because I see you're like class B and C. Is that, are you? Yeah. 
Okay. I say I say I'm five four, but it's like I think I'm like five three okay. and like a tenth or something like that. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna. Say I, <laughs> it's like I think it might be sometimes our our size maybe, and just I don't know because like when I tell people my weight, they're like really, and I'm just like like I know I'm short, but like <laughs> like I have weight. <laughs> yeah, I got I got some size. Okay. <laughs> And I know you said too that, um, so you said you played basketball in high school? In I did, yeah. I, um, I played basketball all through high school um, and I actually played in college as well, which was a, a major goal of mine just to get sponsored mm -hmm. um, to, to get my school paid for to go to college. Um, so that was a huge, huge thing for me. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool that you're able to say that too, that you, I wish I could have, I went to art school, so there was no sports, but yeah. <laughs> I'm very envious that you were able to continue doing a sport because you probably continued to keep that metabolism up in some sort of way and then go right into bodybuilding. So that is something too. And I don't know what kind of, um, I know you said you do the Stairmaster and then your post-workout, but have you ever done any sort of like, like track style um, conditioning for prep of any sort for the, I hear that that would help with lines. That's why I'm yeah. asking. It's so funny because my, my coach currently, he's more of a, a hit cardio where it's like sprints and then, and, you know, walking back or, you know, keeping everything consistent to where it's not just a continuous measuring your heart rate. Like it's like your heart rate is going to be sporadic. Um, and it's funny because when I first started my, my national show, NPC Nationals, that's what my coach also made me do as well. It was hit cardio is, you know, 60 second sprints, 15 second walk. 60 second sprint 30 second jog and it was just so sporadic and we came in actually very very conditioned for for mpc nationals as well um so i i, I think it's all just about your body i've known people who just do the stairmaster steady state seven um speed level and they come in just peeled um but i think for me personally it, i'm more of the person and it's so funny because for usas i remember doing like intervals for the Stairmaster, even though I technically wasn't supposed to, but I was doing like 10 for 30 seconds and level 15 for 25 seconds and then back to level eight, you know, for two minutes, et cetera. And I came in pretty conditioned that time as well. So that's good. No, cause I'm already starting to do that kind of stuff. Cause I, I think I'm the same way as you. I just, I know I got to do a little more and I really, really want those leg lines. So I feel like the intervals and a little bit of a hit is just someone like me. It is a really good shock to the body because I just don't move around that much. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They, I, I can say this much: as much as I had a hate love relationship with Stairmaster, mm -hmm. I didn't have any love for the RPM bike. Like I hated that thing, especially when I had to do like the intervals, and like it, it would be like you had to go on a certain speed and you have to sprint with the bike. Mm -hmm. But you also had to have it on like a certain level of resistance. And that was just like, mm -mm. but we did it. We came in condition. So I'm actually, interestingly enough, I'm excited to get back to doing some, some of the bike work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm sure you're like, I know it works. And that, yeah. that makes it exciting when you know it works, <laughs> you, you know, it's worth it. Definitely. Agreed. Now, what do you do for work full time? So I work in cybersecurity. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, technology, but specific to the cybersecurity industry. So I guess kind of long story short, I work with um, customers that are Fortune 500 customers, Fortune 1000 customers, but I also work with um, hackers, like a, a community of hackers. My company right now has about 800,000 hackers associated with, with our, our company. Mm -hmm. um, and so my main role is to put both of the, the two together mm -hmm. um, to where customers are just making their products and their their assets and their flagship assets safer um, and utilizing um, you know researchers and, and and hackers to help out with making sure that there's no vulnerabilities or no breaches that can happen with their their products that sounds like you were very kept busy then <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a pretty busy job it's it's uh, unpredictable because there will be days where it's like, okay, I have my, my schedule. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And then those days go the way that they should. Mm -hmm. And then you have other days where it's like, I have a customer fire or I have like someone who's like, I have to fix something at 6 AM or at like 10 PM and just have to make sure that you're readily available for, for the customers. But I actually really, really enjoy it. I work with, for starters, the hackers that I work with are just ridiculous. Like, 
when you think of a hacker, like actual hacker, like these are actually the people, like the ones that are going through and like are able to access all of your information if they needed to. It's like working with these brilliant minds. Mm -hmm. um, and then also combining that with the brilliant minds of, of these massive technology companies and putting them together. That's one of my favorite parts of the role. That's awesome. I, I know exactly what you mean. I know a lot of people from high school that were into that kind of stuff. And I'd be like, how did you do that? It was like, how did you do that? And it's, it's that kind of stuff. They just, they just go into it. It's just like a different language if they're doing code and stuff. I'm like, yeah. Cause I do graphic design. So I understand where it's like the, the web design is like a whole different language where I'm like, Whoa, I don't, I don't know how you made it work, but you did. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. That, that UI design is, is, technically speaking, really, if you look at it, kind of the most, most important piece, that's the part where everybody is looking at the customers, users are, are looking at what the experience of, of the product that you've put out is. So, mm -hmm. and well, that's good that you enjoy it. Does that um, make it easy for like prepping and stuff? Like I'm assuming if your job's like mine at all, like it's actually pretty easy to just like sit and eat your meals. Right. It is. And interestingly enough, I, I work remote. I, <laughs> I work remote before the whole pandemic started. That was like a, a goal of mine is to have an actual remote job just because I actually like being in my home. Mm -hmm. I have like a really good setup and I'm, I'm more productive whenever I'm just kind of by myself and, and working. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily enough, I have a company that is extraordinarily, I've, I've, I've never been a part or associated with a company like this before. They're really, really open um, and supportive of, work-life balance like i know that all companies say that but and they'll give you like unlimited pto but it's like if you take too much time off like we're going to track that mm -hmm. uh, this company doesn't do that like my my i love my boss i love my ceo um everyone in my company um you know after the show they would reach out to me some of them actually watch the show which is crazy oh, um so and a lot of them have actually become some of my really really close friends so it makes it a little bit easier whenever you have a company that not only pays you your salary, but it's also like telling you like, yes, go and do what you want to do. Like we, we got you. So that's perfect. Cause then you can just be like, listen, I need like a, uh, this week for a pro show and this week for a pro show and they're pretty close <laughs> together, but like, <laughs> you know? that's exactly it. I, I, my pro debut was in August at the end of August and my second pro show was in October. I took a week and a half off for both shows and it was just like, no biggie. I had to, of course, there was some work to do in between it. Like it wasn't an easy thing. I had to make sure all of, all of my customers and, and my portfolio was taken care of. Um, but luckily enough, I have a, a team of people that are just like totally willing to take over emergencies in case there's ever a customer fire um, with, with things. So. That's great. Yeah. That, that really helps you mentally too. You probably feel a little bit more like not stressed out and that, yeah. people don't understand sometimes that like when you're prepping for a show you, you know you want to be as like minimal stress as possible yeah yeah and work work stress is not fun <laughs> yeah i i have experienced previous to to my company that i'm at right now experience the work stress of doing a, a prep while working at a company that you don't like or you know that just doesn't fit the the necessities that you're looking for Mm -hmm. um, it is it makes a difference it really does for sure i agree and so now you've been in off season since october then since october yep we did a, a, a mild rebound phase uh, with my coach andrew at that time um but now we're definitely in full-on off season um right now Technically, we had been trying, I, I've been eating foods, but I've just been giving my body a little bit of a break from pretty much everything. Um, I took a week off from workouts around the holidays for the first time, which was crazy. Like it, it was actually really hard for me to do that, especially with the fact like I didn't hit the goal of 2020 that I was looking for. So it was like, I have to do everything that I possibly can, um, you know, leading into 2021. But that week off actually helped. Um, and we started, I started with my coach officially, officially with nutrition workout subs um, at the beginning of, of January, so. That's great. Yeah, because I've heard that, that sometimes people don't, they underestimate rest. And I'm like, no, chill, just take a break. Okay. <laughs> did you take a break after Chicago? I did take a break after Chicago, uh, immediate, in my mind, like, because I, I didn't, I didn't place the way that I wanted to, but I, I'm sure this happens a lot, but I was just instantly, like, my mind was like, 
I have to go immediately back. Like, I don't want to take any breaks off. There's, I don't have any time for this. Mm-hmm. But the difference is, is like, this is, I think the saying is just so basic, but it's true. This is a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. So you have time. I'm young. I have a healthy body, which is I'm something I'm very, very thankful for. Um, there's no need to rush this right now. You know, you, I know where I'm going. My coach believes in me and believes that I can get to where I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't have to happen in, in six weeks. It doesn't have to happen in, in six months, but it, it does eventually have to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. And I understand. And plus with you saying that you needed size and I'm sure you got to eat and everything. I mean, and like we just talked about, we can put on weight and, you know, you're not going to be looking like ready for a show so for a while and you got your goals. So, you know, you're obviously eating and putting in the work in the gym. So. Yeah, definitely. And the eating part, or at least for off season, um, I started out just a little bit difficult because uh, it, it was just a lot of food kind of an increase when I first started, like technically speaking, at my, my first off season, um, which was after I won USA's and then I actually stopped for a little bit working with my coach at the time um, and just kind of get a balance. But I definitely did not go away from the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, the, the food is pretty high. And the good news about it is I'm actually very hungry. So it's like I, I can get done eating a food or get done eating a meal um, in about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I, I am actually hungry and ready. And it's like the meals that I'm eating are, are pretty, pretty dense. So it's nice. Probably a lot of rice and all the other basic foods that you're like, listen, it doesn't seem like much, but it is a lot to me. <laughs> It adds up. It's like in contest prep, you're like, oh my God, I, like, I wish I didn't regret, you know, eating all of that food or like, if I could eat like two cups of rice right now, I would be so thankful. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to off season where you technically really could, you know, eat what you want to eat, you're just like, hell man. Mm-hmm. But right now it's just like a different, different mindset where it's like, this is what I have to do. Mm-hmm. And it's no problem. Like I get to eat, I have the ability to eat, I have food that I can possibly eat. And it's something that I'm volunteering to do. Like nobody's forcing me to eat this food. Nobody's forcing me to be on stage. Like this is something that, that you are, you can do because you have the capacity and you have the ability to do it. So just get it done. Definitely. Yeah. And I think honestly, we always want what we can't have. So if you're in prep and you want food, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's <laughs> <the general. laughs> so is yeah. there, um, a show that you're looking at next year you don't have to say which one if you don't want to but is there a show that you want to do <laughs> not yet me and my coach are, are working on this it's actually something that i'm going to be having um conversations with him about um which for the first time ever i usually it's like i choose a show on myself and i i kind of go forward with it but um i think under the guidance of, of brandon we'll choose a show that that would work well that's close by for both of us that we both can attend it wouldn't be just a crazy you know, out of the office time. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do know that we're shooting for a show in fall of, of okay. 2021. Yeah, and it must be exciting. Um, I'm sure you heard, you know about the Arnold, even that might be a big possibility, right? Yeah, that is definitely something I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can we can get a couple of shows under to, to get an invitation um, or apply, but that is, that would be incredible um, to yeah. be able to get on that stage, so. For sure, I think that will be really popular. I think, I think it getting moved to the fall excited a lot of people. <laughs> it, because it tech, it was in March every other or maybe April, March eighth. It would have uh, been March fourth, yeah. Yeah, yeah, every year. So this gives people enough time to kind of develop from the Olympia. Um, I know technically the Olympia is usually in September. It was in December last year, but um, I think they should have the Arnold a little bit later in the year. Why not? Hey, better for the weather too. Ohio. I mean, I live in Pennsylvania, so I know Ohio, we're getting cold. <laughs> Man, that's a different type of cold. It's like anytime that I talk about being cold in Texas, it doesn't, it doesn't like correlate over to the northern states. <laughs> no, but I know because I have relatives in Texas. So I, I know they come over here and they are bundled up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a total different type of cold. But it's hot in Texas, so that's that's another difference. You can have the heat in, in Pennsylvania, which I'm sure it gets very hot, mm-hmm. but Texas heat is just like a, it's, mm-hmm. I think this is the hottest state I've ever been to. And I've lived in yes. Georgia and South Carolina before. Mm-hmm. I've visited Arizona, Las Vegas, all of that. 
um, Texas is just, it's different. <laughs> I don't even know if it's, you can say dry heat or not, because it's like, you're far, you're not super close to the water, so it's not yeah. like super humid, but yeah, it's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's its own type of heat. It's not humid or it's not dry. It's like a, in the middle of in between, which I personally feel is kind of the worst. Like at least if it's always humid, you can make adjustments. Or if it's always like dry, then okay, I know what I need to wear. But with Texas, it's like you don't know what type of heat you're getting on any given day. <laughs> yeah, and you're the one wearing a hat and a hoodie right now. <laughs> well, it's actually cold now. At, at least the last couple of weeks, um, it's been pretty pretty chilly. But you could probably always find me in like a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. I lied to you. You won't always find me in a sweatshirt. But in the winter time, at least in December and January, I think because of the feel of everything around me, it's like the holidays. I'm like, mm -hmm. I have to wear a sweatshirt because it's Christmas and New Year's. Like that's what people do. <laughs> Didn't you guys just get snow too? We did. Yeah, <laughs> we got snow on, on like Friday or Saturday or something like that. It was it was a lot of snow. It didn't stick so like it did. It in the I think it's stuck in like Austin. Um, I don't think Houston got any snow at all. Um, Interesting. But Dallas got a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that must have threw you in for a little loop there. You're like, what is this? <laughs> it did. It's so funny. My my partner Destiny, she had been talking about it for weeks. She was like, oh my god, like it's going to be snowing on this week in these or in January, like going to happen and i'm just like okay dude you know how many times you see snow flurries on like weather reports and it doesn't happen it's never going to happen in texas mm -hmm. and then she said it was going to happen at 9 a.m so we wake up at 9 a.m just and look out the window no snow it's like just a regular texas and then it started coming down at like 11 um, a.m or something like that i think i said nine too hard delay. yeah and then it made me a believer <laughs> that's fantastic um, so I was kind of looking on your Instagram too, and uh, did you write a book, or did someone write your book? What is so book my partner? She she's a lot of different things. Um, she works in technology as well for for her day job, and she actually really really enjoys um, working in tech as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but her passion is is writing. She's an author. She writes a lot of books. This is also you know something that. Um, if she could, or if she wanted to, she could probably just go through that path um, and stop the technology part of it, but she really likes to work. So she writes all of the books um, and she just interviews me. So like after uh, uh, USA, she interviewed me and asked a couple of questions and she would literally just write down. She would make up the questions and write down everything and then turn it into like an interview style book. She did that for the pro debut and um, all of the other things. So it's really her her content with me just answering questions. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I was like looking at, so everybody knows, um, cause your Instagram is, what's your Instagram handle again? Palm, Palm Vitality. Okay. Yeah, so everyone has to follow you and you have it in your bio, the, your Amazon link for um, Destiny's books. So does she compete? Man, she doesn't. And here's, it's so funny, I actually met her in the gym in 2016 and my coach at the time had been trying to get her to compete because she just she doesn't post a lot of physique pictures and sometimes she'll be on my story i'll show it mm -hmm. um but she's one of those people that is built for this like mm -hmm. if you ever look at like shanique grant and her structure and how her muscles are just laid on her her body it's just like yeah like she, she was meant for this mm -hmm. Destiny has the same structure. She has a very wide clavicle. She has wide shoulders. She has the smallest waist I've ever seen, ever. And I, I, I'm a competitor. I've seen IFBB Pro. She has the smallest waist I've ever seen. And she also has this quad sweep that's just ridiculous. Her hamstrings are huge, but she has no interest in it. She's never played sports, like, really? outside of just recreational. Mm -hmm. She has never competed. She doesn't want to compete. She has no interest in it. Everyone I speak to, Everyone at Destination Dallas too, pros. They'll come up to her and be like, "I know you compete, Ayana, but like, do you compete because you look like, like you should be competing right now?" Even Andrew said the very first time Andrew Wu met her, she worked with Andrew for a little bit just to try to put on a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. USA is almost the first time that he met her, and was like, "You look dick." Like, I, I'm, I've seen like check-in photos. And I could tell people with check-in photos see how their structure is, but your photos don't do you any justice. Like. You have a gift and you should use that gift like i can't tell you how many times people are just like you need to do this but she doesn't she doesn't want to mm -hmm. yeah that's 
That is interesting. Yeah, because there are people like that. That's the thing about competing. You know, there's always probably somebody somewhere who has a genetics that just isn't on stage. So, <laughs> yeah. I saw a post the other day. I think it was Terrence Ruffin, um, second place Mr. Olympia for classic physique. And he said the same thing where it's like, you never know. Like, there's a group of extraordinarily talented competitors in every division right now. Like, that's, that's not a small thing. But it's like, look, like, imagine just the people who don't even know what bodybuilding is or has never competed or just has no interest in it. That would just be like, that would change the game literally if they did have interest in it. Um, and I think about that a lot, actually. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I really do. Because, you know, especially when you get stuck comparing yourself to other people, you know, you're just, you know, looking at the pros or, you know, looking at other people in the gym. And in reality, it's like, hey, there's people out there that aren't even on the stage. So yeah. you can't compare because there's people out there you don't even know. <laughs> that could literally get up there and just destroy it, just kill it. <laughs> And so yeah, that that's that's another part for for me, um, especially this year. I remember when I first started, I was one of the people where I would like search the hashtag of the show that I was doing and like be like, okay, what is what does everybody look like? And um, for USA's and so and after that, I I actually did not do that um, because it's like you you really don't know who shows up. Um, and then outside of competing as well, it's just like you need to make sure that you're putting your feet in reality because yes, you do have a Mister and Mrs. Olympia and whatever division, but there is someone out there in this world that could potentially beat whoever Mr. and Mrs. Olympia for whatever division is if they decided to do it. So. Yeah, and I know earlier you said about, you know, doing the pro shows and you try not to look at the list. And I, I don't even know what that would feel like. Because like you said, like when you're an amateur, you can do the hashtags and stuff. Yeah. Or you can look at last year's winners or who was in the show last year. But for you pros, I mean, they just like, they like plaster it everywhere. They're like, <laughs> Show. <laughs> and you're just like i don't want to see it you're going to <laughs> don't tag i don't want to see anybody that's competing in this show and i actually i, I mean there was a couple of girls that i i've known just because I, i've known them for a long time when i first started competing that that were doing shows that i was doing but um i really did try to actually not pay attention um to to those updates and just really focus in on my own physique and what i needed to do and I think it has helped me, though we, of course, we didn't, we didn't place the way that we wanted to for, for the, my first year competing as a pro. Mm -hmm. um, but going forward, that's still going to be the mindset. Like, I, it doesn't matter what you look like. I'm, I'm here to just focus on myself, um, uh, you know, and just continue to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I, I can only imagine, I'm sure it's easier said than done, but yeah. I can commend you on that because um, I know even uh, Chris Bumstead talks about that you know or and even Brian they were like I don't you know I just didn't concern myself with people's comments you know get on post a picture and let it be you know just wasn't really worried about what other people were doing so if you can get that mindset and just make it a good habit mm -hmm. I'm sure it helps your physique a lot it does and, and you're just you're overall like going into the stage you're you're just free with your own thoughts. Like you don't have to worry about, oh my God, I look at this person's social media page and they look so good. And then on top of that, like some people look better on social media than they actually do in, on the stage. So it's like, sometimes you can hype yourself up from people using, you know, I don't really care if someone uses a filter, but just looking good on, on social media and you're just like, what the hell, man? Um, mm -hmm. And then they come to the stage and it's like, you look different. Um, and, and vice versa, someone who doesn't look good on social media and you get to the stage, you're like, what? happen <laughs> so it's just like I, I think it's in everyone's best interest just to like i know we're always going to use social media but it's probably best to just do your thing come to the stage um only focus on yourself yeah for sure and thinking of that too um so you have your own clothing line right is that your shirt is it it is it's a it's yeah. a new stuff where can people find are you selling these now where are they at man so it has been a long journey so it, I ordered the actual sweatshirts themselves because I'm doing all of the, the printing and everything by myself. Um, actually still waiting on the rest of my beanies to get here before everything is sold. It's All of my shipments have been delayed. I can only imagine it's because of the holidays. I decided to order hundreds of things um, during the holidays and thinking it was going to get here in two days and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I finally have pretty much everything. I'm just waiting on the beanies right now. Um, 
and then I'll start printing everything. I'm hoping to get them printed by this weekend mm -hmm. and then being um, available for sale as early as middle of next week. Um, but they're going to be on my website, palmvitality.com. Um, Destiny yeah. is actually responsible for my, my website. We both can make the changes and, and do the coding that needs to, but she's responsible for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be there in, or you can also uh, DM me like a shirt size, um, whatever sweatshirt size you need, your address um, and payment information. And we can do it that way too. Awesome. And that'd be perfect because I'll probably get this out tomorrow and people can already start getting, uh, getting with you for that. Cause I've already seen you, you got like multiple colors and stuff coming out too with your shirts and yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah. I think that's great. Also, I wanted to add that too. As a pro, I think it's great that I'm starting to see more and more of the pros want to do their own shirt line and like, like mm -hmm. it's exciting. You want to kind of promote yourself a little more that way. Absolutely. That that's, that's a big deal. And it took me a while to get here. Cause I was just, I was so focused on like getting a, a sponsor to do it for me and then me promoting my sponsor stuff. Um, and, and though I would still absolutely do that, but it's, it's still just a little bit different and, and be yourself is something that really means something to me personally outside of like, who is like giving me free clothes just to wear to represent them. Like I want to be able to provide something that means something to me that has a purpose that other people can represent if they've ever experienced, you know, some of the things that I've experienced, especially in the social media led world where everybody kind of looks the same or everybody has one way of doing things. And if you don't do it this way, then you're not going to get as many, as much attention or exposure. And it's just like the, the purpose of be yourself is literally just that, like, mm -hmm. just keep, keep trucking along. Eventually it'll come. It might not come as quickly as everybody else's are, are playing into the game mm -hmm. that had bought the, bought the dream. Essentially, really, they literally purchased the dream. Um, just sticking and being yourself, it'll, it'll come to place if you just don't change up, don't switch up. That's a great message too. Um, so in my podcast, I always like to do for fun birthdays and I kind of already know your sign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you are a Sagittarius, aren't you? I'm a Sagittarius. Yes. I also know you're a Gemini rising, which I'm sure a lot of people don't know the rising and moon, but <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm a Gemini and I'm just like, well, at least she's got a little bit of communication I can relate to. <laughs> got a little bit of charisma communication part of it comes with the Gemini. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think it's a good sign. <laughs> I, listen, my sister's a Gemini and she's like my best friend, literally. And Sagittarians um, and Geminis are, are some of the top two, like as far as like compatibility on all on all aspects friendship family wise really everything the fire signs and the air signs usually mesh very very well together just easy um and of course earth signs and water signs mesh well. i was just that's what was in my head i'm like those darn like wet blanket water signs <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes man so i've got interesting enough i i actually have a lot of fire in my overall chart my son is sagittarius um i have a lot of fire in my chart I have a lot of earth in my chart mm -hmm. but i also have a ton of scorpio like there's i have like three planets are in scorpio so my my ruling planets or my ruling elements are fire water and earth so. okay okay yeah i think in, in my chart it's like I know for a fact I have very little earth, even though I'm a Taurus rising, but other than that, I'm like, there's no earth. It's a lot of Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of personality. I love it. And creativity. Every yeah. Gemini I've ever met has been so creative, like it, it, whether they're producing and, and putting out their creativity or you can just see it within themselves, how they talk, how they, uh, how they present themselves. It's just like, that's a creative, you can tell. Yeah, and to me, Sagittarius, you guys are pretty calm, you know, easygoing, go with the flow. <laughs> I'm going to say that I think, and I love my fire signs, <laughs> but I think the Sagittarian is the, the, the most calm fire sign. We're the last yeah. fire sign, so we're the one in December. Aries is the first, Leo is the second, and Sagittarius is the third, because we come at the end of the year. Um, but just from my own experience with other fire signs, all of the other Sagittarians I've met have always just been super low-key, just like... <laughs> doing their own thing, very independent. They, if they need to get a little fiery, they can, but it's not like an automatic, like yeah. immediate fire. Like if you see a Sagittarius get upset about something, it's, it's taken a while to get there mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be more worse than, than the other. Like a volcano. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like with like an Aries or a Leo, or at least some of the ones that I've met, it's a little bit quicker. Cause it's like their, their fire is, is 
closer, like more immediate, where it's like, mm -hmm, you won't get, you won't be able to get that past me um, very quickly. Where Sagittarius, we're just like, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got fire. We'll use it when we need the fire. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> when, it, when it's necessary, I'm going to save it. But when it comes, it's like, all right, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so glad that you're so educated on it too, because I feel like you might be more than me, but I know enough where I'm like, I know exactly what she's saying. I know. <laughs> it's so funny. I just recently, well, no, I, I have always been interested in astrology, but I think over like the last two years or so, that's when I really started digging into like birth charts and everything. And it's, it's funny because my mom gave me my birth time two years ago when I first started uh, getting into this. Mm -hmm. And so I searched my birth chart on Cafe Astrology and like had everything, like my times, my houses, mm -hmm. my actual planetary like placements. And then like, I want to say a year ago, she messaged me again out of the blue, just like random because I, I'm always talking to my mom. Like my mom's also my best friend. She's Aquarius. Aquarians and Sagittarius go together really well. Aquarius are good um, friends. <laughs> yeah. She messaged me. She was like, I just found your birth chart and you were actually born at a different time than I originally told you. And I'm like, what? Do that? <laughs> like everything has changed. My whole birth chart is to everything I've known about myself now. <laughs> yeah. Has totally changed. Um, but yeah, that that's really two years ago was when I really got involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And I, it, you try to tell people about the rising and moon, but then you go into the houses. They're like, what? Different ballgame, different one. And I'm oh. still learning, still. Oh, yeah. That's why to me, I'm just like, I feel like I'm still very moderate to beginner level. But I feel like once you get into the houses, you're getting up there. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you figure out, okay, my son is in the sixth house or rising in the seventh house. What does this exactly mean? That's when it's like, all right. You might be picking up speed. You could be able to potentially, you know, tell someone else what you've learned. <laughs> What's your partner sign? She's a Scorpio. Ooh. <laughs> she is, she is a, <laughs> and she is purely Scorpio. But the good news is, um, it's funny, of course I did this. We have her, our birth time and we have my birth time. So we went through total compatibility on Cafe Astrology because mm -hmm. I'm interested in that. We're actually a really strong, strong match. So her chart, is really really in sync with mine um she's a scorpio sun she's a sagittarius moon and she's a capricorn rising and i'm a sagittarius sun a capricorn moon and a gemini rising so even our big three actually go uh really well with each other but she's dominant scorpio wise and um she's definitely a scorpio <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, I love that stuff. I, I was going to say, it's always fun when you use astrology for like relationships and love. So I was just like, I know she dabbled in that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, definitely. And she she accepts it. Like, say, there are times where we will be like watching a TV show or a movie and we'll just be like, what do you think their sign is? Like, I'm catching Taurus vibes, but maybe it could be like a Virgo. And we'll literally have conversations mid movie if she's not falling asleep mid movie. <laughs> about you know what we think the person's sign is so. that's hilarious yeah i definitely agree i'll be on the phone with my mom and i'll be like oh my brother what a such a pisces <laughs> <laughs> that's the one sign that i've i've been anytime i've met a pisces person mm -hmm. i've always known they're pisces that's the yeah. one sign that i personally i don't think i've ever gotten gotten wrong <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The water signs, they, they usually stick out probably because we're so like, you know, fire and airy and bubbly and everything you meet, you may, you meet a water sign and you're just like, all right, somebody pissed in your Cheerios or <laughs> it's a different type of vibe. You're just like, oh my God, why is not this person smiled yet? Like I'm trying to get them to like laugh out loud and they're just like, right. See through you, you know, <laughs> especially how talkative and everything we are. And you're just like, yeah. Why are you not talking more? <laughs> we'll like spill all of our details to them and they're just like taking mental notes and we yeah. know nothing about them. Or at least that, that's, that's how it started with, with Destiny, but I guess she liked it. I mean, five, five years later, we're, we're still here, so. That's great. <laughs> well, I wanna thank you so much for coming on. I, I think I kept you on longer than I thought, but I was really excited to talk to you and I definitely knew that you had a lot of information and cool stuff to share. So thank you so much for your time. And looking forward to 2021 with <laughs> everything. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for, for setting this up and, and just your interest. I, 
I deeply appreciate it. Um, and I really enjoyed this conversation. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And uh, good luck on the t-shirt sales and hoodies and stuff. So I hope that everybody goes to your Instagram and looks it up and yeah, I'll have this uploaded for tomorrow. <laughs> I know. Well, it's been a pleasure, Blaze. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay. All right. You too.